you for joining uh, us on the Shantae Golson Show. I have a very special guest, and I want to introduce her. Before I introduce her, I would love to welcome you to the show. Now, feel free to uh, send me a message if you would like to on topics that you would like to enjoy in your journey of preventing burnout and or recovering from burnout. This show specifically highlights executives and entrepreneurs for the purpose of increasing their productivity outcomes, cash flow, and helping them in their everyday life to be that fulfilled and successful career individual. And so every Thursday, we have an episode readily available for you on all podcast platforms, as well as the new YouTube channel, The Shantae no, excuse me, Shantae Golson International. So go ahead and join us over there. If you want to see our faces, see us having a conversation, you're welcome to do that. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. So we have a special guest and I am uh, looking forward to meaty and juicy, relevant information uh, from our guest. So we have today uh, Julia Goldbert, who is a founder and the owner of Hopeful Bluebird Consulting LLC. Now, she has mental health uh, expertise for 15 years. She practiced uh, concerning trauma and addiction. So helping individuals to come into the ability to function well and to overcome fear. Now, not only does Julia have a 15 year experience as a health mental health counselor, but she also has a decade of experience in leadership and development and supervision. Now she's helped leaders and entrepreneurs all over the world identify problematic issues in their organizations and how to build them cohesively and improve communication and resolve conflict. And we know that's very important. And she currently works as an executive coach and leadership consulting, helping high performance professionals break free from toxic workplace build up and stretch their confidence and strategies for their career endeavors. Welcome to the show, Julia. How are you today? I'm doing great. I am so excited to be on your show. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. So when we talk about executive coaching or leadership consulting, what are we really talking about here? Yeah, so that's a really good question. So basically, most of my clients are looking for help because something's not going well in their organization. A lot of times it really has to do with the work culture. Um, and not everybody is always on the same page with it, especially if executives are not always on scene or are not kind of part of the hands-on work with the teams, they might be a little bit disconnected. And so they'll call, they'll call for help if there's a lot of turnover, um, they're experiencing just a lot of complaints. And so they're, ask, they're, they're asking, is there a better way, right? Is there something I'm doing? And that's when I step in because the first step is asking for help. If you think everything's going great, even if it's not, then that wouldn't be a time to ask for help. So that's what I usually see. Okay, so when we talk about toxicity, when we talk about a work environment that is toxic, what are some warning signs here for this toxic work environment? Yeah, so there's definitely a few. Some of them come from you internally. So feeling extreme dread going into work or dread before a phone call with a supervisor or meeting, even if you're doing Zoom meetings, um, that's a sign that something's going on. Um, and then also the way the workplace functions together. So a common theme is feeling devalued. Um, a lot of clients will say that even though they're experts in their field, they are spoken to in a way that makes them feel devalued. Some of them expressed public humiliation during meetings, mm -hmm. creating a culture of fear. So people are terrified to speak up, terrified to um, say or do anything. They're just trying to keep their head down, um, not to be targeted. So that's a big part of it. Um, gaslighting, making you think, you know, there's things going on that there isn't. Just kind of twisting reality in a way um, and just making people feel extremely insecure, worried, um, and just kind of always doubting themselves. And that's really the goal of uh, of toxic leadership. Um, if that is happening, that's not always a uh, it's not always planned, but sometimes it is where people want that culture that they created. 
Okay. So, you know, I like to build examples around stories or at least a scenario. So we'll, we'll call our uh, mock or pretend client, just call her, hmm, Jill. Let's just call her Jill. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so Jill, Jill's warning sign of a toxic environment around her are what in the examples of her work performance has dropped. She's no longer receiving 4.0s on her evaluations. She's received 2.9, but she's been there for nine years and has always gotten a 4.0 with no disciplinary track. So things are changing for, for Jill at work. So what signs in our made up uh, scenario would Jill need to recognize for this toxic work environment that could help her to increase her performance? Right, so I would ask Jill what's, you know, what's holding her back here or what's changed. Um, and if she's saying that she feels like she's not competent anymore, then we can open up why is that, right? So if she's being devalued, being treated like her expertise doesn't matter, she will start to believe that, unfortunately, and her work productivity will show that. Mm -hmm. um, probably she also probably doesn't go to work all the time. She might call out sick because she's not feeling well quite frequently. Um, and she that passion that she had is just gone because you, you know, you can't keep somebody in a productive workspace treating them in very negative ways. So that is, those are common signs. Um, and then if she doesn't fix the issue, she probably will, will leave um, or just kind of put her head down. But the problem with that is serious health effects, headaches, stomach issues. Some people have PTSD that come to me from a work environment. It's not uncommon. So a lot of mental health effects, physical health effects, family issues. She might be withdrawn from other life. Um, because of the work situation. So it is really, really serious. Um, and so that's why I'm doing this work because nobody deserves to be treated like that and, and have, you know, all these horrible side effects just because they're trying to work. Yeah. And that's true in my case as well as a leadership consultant and executive coach where you have these particular mindset patterns that lead to default. And so when you talk about concerning your practice uh, of work with these individuals, you talk about consequences of toxic work environment. So what are Jill's consequences? Not only is she having health problems, she's having product productivity problem. Are there other consequences that Jill is expected to go through as a result of this toxic work environment? Yes, so those are kind of the more acute ones, physical and um, and the mental effects, but it could also have long-term effects for her career because if her if she's showing at work that she's not doing well, that's going to reflect later on. So mm -hmm. she could have her career derailed. Um, I've seen that happen. Um, I've actually experienced that myself where I had to do a, a shift because I had been in, a t in more than one. Uh, two really bad toxic work environments of where it can affect your further productivity when you want to go to a higher level, want to go to a leadership role or continue in a leadership role. You definitely need to have references and you can't have your, you know, your work showing poorly because that's going to, in some, a very unfortunate way, feed into the narrative that, that she's being fed at work. Yeah. So, yeah, so those are kind of over overarching uh, consequences of not being able to find uh, further employment. Mm -hmm. And if we put it in practical terms to break that down, basically she may become written up several times. Maybe she has a disciplinary act. Maybe she has to go under mentorship as some nicely try to way to say to get herself together. And all of this goes into her HR file. So mm -hmm. when she is looking to leave this particular toxic environment, her HR file goes with her in terms of the new company calling for references, right? So that's another example of how it can follow. Yeah, it can follow you for a really long time, absolutely. Because let's say, let's say she's fired from her toxic work environment and she can't get a job because she's been fired, she's been written up. And now she can't pay her rent or her food. Uh -huh. 
Mm-hmm. So this is really, really serious stuff. And not everybody realizes that it can, it can stick to you for a while. It could take a while to get out of this because if you're in the mindset that you don't know what you're doing and you have this quote unquote evidence from what had happened at the envi- at this toxic work environment, you don't have the confidence to go to the interview and an- answer questions. You don't have confidence in yourself anymore that you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So you have to kind of reset and help somebody build that up and make sure that you do know that this is your expertise and you do know what you're doing and you're confident, but it takes time to get there. Otherwise you can be stuck in a downward spiral. Now, can, can Jill become stagnated for unknown reasons? Let's kind of talk about it. Let me break that question down. So when we focus or talk about burnout, if a person has really experienced burnout, because that's my specialty, that I'm a burnout recovery executive. So when you really experience burnout, you don't know you're going through that. You know, eventually you're realizing some things are off and you're realizing consequences around you, but you're still not putting two and two together. So just like you described Jill, how she isolates from her relationships, how she calls out, how she has health problems, things of that particular nature, how can she recognize that she's burnt out? If she's burnt out, if that's the primary reason why all of the downfall is starting to take place. Right. So that definitely could be another piece to it, because a lot of times this goes hand in hand. If you're in a toxic work environment, you can also be burnt out, Mm -hmm. Um, but you can also be burnt out and not be in a toxic work environment. So it depends. Um, But yeah, recognizing it in in yourself could be a little bit tricky. If you're working in a good in a good team environment, sometimes you're trained to recognize it in your coworkers and, and say something. But for the most part, it's um, kind of more cynical, maybe not as maybe not giving people a benefit of a doubt anymore, have a kind of a cynical turn to your thoughts or your comments, being more irritable, like snapping at people for things you wouldn't necessarily have done before, um, feeling like overwhelmed, like you have so much work on your plate, there's no way to humanly get it done. And this yeah. is all consistent, by the way, it's not just once or twice, this is a chronic uh, stress level and a chronic situation that you're in. Uh, work-life balance as well, like we said before, if you're So I had a client recently who came to me and she was experiencing this. It's more, you work all day, you know, you can never get it done. You come home, you pass out, you wake up, you go back to work. There's no other, there's nothing else other than work in your life. Stressful work. That is very, very unhealthy. Sleep might take a hit, appetite, um, and you just, and you're starting to feel inadequate, right? Because the work you're given is actually not possible to get it done in the time frame that you're given. So mm-hmm. once again, it's a leadership issue, but you're the one experiencing it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a great point. Uh, you know, what I've learned, one of the concepts that I help my clientele with is messaging communication. So if you don't know as a leader, as a boss, if you don't know how to communicate effectively what you need, that could also cause stress to everybody around it because they're trying to juggle to figure it out and you haven't even spoken directly and clearly what you particularly need. Uh, So communication is a huge aspect of work, double work, triple work, doing it over and over again, right? Like, it's just like when you were in school and your teacher gave you an X and say, rework it, you rework it, you take it back and she graded. it. How did you get that? And then you have to over and over and over. And so with that being stated, that overage can really start moving into some other aspects, resentment, you know, uh, di- anger towards your balls, you being passive aggressive or passive. I mean, we can talk, I can talk on and on for days about it. So you have a program that you utilize in helping professionals recover from the toxic work environment. So to be clear, separated from me, I help them to recover or prevent burnout internally so that they externally can uh, prosper and be fulfilled. You help them in recovering to help with the understanding of the surroundings, the toxic work environment. So tell us what this program is about and how does it work? Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, with my background and, and expertise, it 
what I was doing educationally and professionally, and then with what I personally experienced and seeing how just how horrible and degrading it was for people that were just so good at their jobs. And I just didn't think it was fair for them to go through that or myself or either of us. So um, I started opening up the conversation and I had so many people tell me stories that were so similar to mine Mm -hmm. that even I was a little bit surprised because I didn't realize how common this was. And so the program came from those conversations from what I experienced and also what was helpful for me to get back to a a leadership position and a successful position. So the the first part is is the mindset, once again, because if you really believe what was told to you, and we all do, if we're in an environment, we start to believe that as our reality, right? right? At some point, no matter how smart or successful we are, we're in an environment, we're affected by it. So mm-hmm. mindset, increasing confidence, understanding what happened to you was not your fault and understanding certain patterns is really helpful because you realize, oh, okay, this is real and, and this has been identified as very toxic leadership patterns or just in general patterns in the organization. So understanding and then slowly shifting back to get you to that confident level um, and to not be ashamed of what happened, but to use it to propel you to the next step. So we do the mindset piece then also the clarity because we have to make sure that you were actually happy in that profession, right? Is that what your passion and purpose is? Is this really what you want? Because this could be a great chance to reevaluate and see what, what lights that fire inside of you. So doing that piece. And then once we get those two figured out, we go more into career strategy of either getting you back to a corporate workplace, starting your own business, or any other options, like what do you want and what's our career strategy to get you there? So that is my program in a very small nutshell, but I am very passionate about it. I think it is so important and I love seeing these professional, um, you know, professionals that have so much to give, rediscover that, that they realize they have so much to give and um, seeing them be successful again, that is that is my purpose. So yeah, rewarding, isn't it? Reward, yeah. isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. I, I agree. I understand helping others to uh, navigate the waters of life is my passion as well. Yeah, I can appreciate that. So, you know, are there any upcoming great things that you are doing that you want to make an announcement on the Shantae Golson show? Sure. Yeah. So, um, so like I said, I'm launching my course um, officially. I was doing it kind of unofficially before. So the um, recovery from a toxic work environment uh, course. I also um, am co-hosting and presenting at a summit. Uh, it's pre-recorded, so it's live for the next week. It's okay. called the Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise Summit. Um, so anyone is welcome to join us there. It's myself and a lot of other experts talking about different topics. And we have our offers there as well. So that's the two things that I have going on for this month. So how do they uh, access registration or et cetera for the symposium or the summit? Yeah, so it's a specific link. Um, so I can provide that if, uh, if you would like. So you can give it to them directly. Yeah, we can put that in the description. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, not a problem. So also, where can we find you on social media if we want to learn more about you? And and do you have a website that we can also view? Um, So right now I'm working on my website, but the best way would just probably be on LinkedIn. Um, I have everything kind of set up of what I do, uh, the different, different, you know, levels of career, career help and um, organizational help. And you can also just reach out to me to chat I'm also setting up some networking events. So if you'd like to be part of that, you can just send me a message and I will invite you and we can all help each other. Okay. Well, Julia, thank you so much for uh, speaking with me today and also entertaining the mock geo scenario so that people can really tangibly understand this particular concept. Uh, Any other things that you want to share before we get ready to close out the Shantae Golston show for this episode? Well, all I would like to share is that if you have any questions about where you are in your career or you're wondering if the place you're at is causing you extra stress, to definitely reach out, um, even if it's just for a consult to kind of get that additional perspective, because sometimes just hearing someone uh, reflect and listen to you makes a big difference so you know that you're not alone. 
Okay. Well, guys, you heard it here on the Shantae Golson show where every entrepreneur and executive has the opportunity to grow within themselves. And so if you're looking for uh, professional development, the information is here as well as on, on all of my websites as well. You can reach me on every social media at uh, Executive Burnout Recovery Coach. And so make it a great day. Make it the best day that you can make it. We'll talk next Thursday for your upcoming episode. Goodbye for now.